The 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines and how it began. Recalling all the history about the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines and how it began. So first was the arrival of Ferdinand Pagilan on March 16, 1521. 31, 15, 31. The first Holy Mass and planting of cross. On April 14, 1521, the first baptism and giving the image of Santo Nino. On April 27, 1565, was the arrival of Lopez de Ligaspi and the first Augustinian friars. On April 28, 1625, finding of the image of Santo Nino de Cebu. They found it from the Basilica Menor del Santo Nino founded. On March 21, 1568, conversion of Braha Tupas, King of Cebu. On January 24, 1571, the Gaspi conquered Manila by the zeal of the first missionaries. 1571, Manila Cathedral founded, named as Church of Manila. May 19, 1571, Nuestra Senora de Guia consecrated as a sworn patroness of Manila. June 24, 1571, San Agustin Church founded. February 6, 1579, Canonical Erection of the Diocese of Manila. 1593-1596, Don Luis Perez de Marinas commissioned the carving of the image of La Naval de Manila, the painting of Doctrina Christiana. August 14, 1595, Archdiocese of Manila established August 25, 1601, the establishment of San Jose Seminary, 1606, arrival of the Black Nazarene, 1611, 1619, and 1639, apparitions of Our Lady of Kaisasai, April 28, 1611, the Pontifical and Royal University of Santo Tomas established 1618, the arrival of the image of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. On 1620, Colegio de San Juan de Letran established 1621, the establishment of Cofradia de Jesus Nazareno. March 25, 1626, Arrival of the image of Our Lady of Antipolo or Our Lady of Peace and Good Voyage. October 24, 1682, Colegio de Santa Isabel founded September 29, 1637, St. Lorenzo Ruiz Martyr. March 15 to October 4, 1646, Battle and Victory of Our Lady of La Naval de Manila and 1667, The Apparition of Our Lady of Porta Viga, April 2, 1672, St. Pedro Calongso Martri, April 28702, the Royal and Councilor San Carlos Seminary Establishment. 717, carving of the image of the Nuestra Señora de Pinafancia. December 8, 1760, 5th Manila Cathedral inaugurated. On March 31, 1858, 6th Manila Cathedral is finished. December 10, 
1859, Estrella Municipal de Manila established known as Ateneo de Manila. December 7, 1879, seven, oh, the 7th Manila Cathedral consecrated and inaugurated. On 1891, the completion of the San Sebastian Basilica, John 29, 9, 9, 9, 10, 06, the consecration of the George Berlin as first Filipino bishop, as the first Filipino Bishop October 5, 1907 First Comunical Coronation in the Philippines La Naval de Manila June 16, 1911 The establish of the La, of the La Salle University July 16, 1925 Declaration of Our Lady of Guadalupe Guadalupe as Heavenly Patroness of the Philippines Heavenly Patroness of the Philippines February 3 to 7, 1937 33rd International Eucharist, Eucharistic Congress in Manila September 12, 1942 Declaration of the Immaculate Conception as the principal patroness of the Philippines. Principal patroness of the Philippines. Philippines. The declaration of the Immaculate Conception. February 15, 1945. Founding of the CBCP as Catholic Welfare Organi Organization. CBCP as Catholic Welfare Organization. October 13, 1949. Gabriel M. Reyes installed as the first Filipino Archbishop of Manila. Gabriel M. Reyes was the, is the first Filipino Archbishop of Manila. On April 9, 1951, formal establishment of PH by diplomatic relations. January 7 to 25, 1953, the first plenary Council of the Philippines on December 7, 1958, post-war Manila Cathedral completed. March 28, 1960, Rufino G. Santos consecrated as the first Filipino Cathedral. On April 11, 1969, Radio Veritas inauguration. November 27, to 29, 1970, the apostolic visit of Pope, Pope Paul the Fourth, the fifth, or the the fifth, the apostolic visit November 27 to 29, 1970, the apostolic visit of Pope Paul the Sixth, February 17 to 22. 1981, the apostolic visit of Pope John Paul II and, and Lorenzo Ruiz beatification. 1984, El Shaddai Charismatic Movement founded. February 22 to 25, 1986, Cardinal St. Paul's The People Power and the October 18, 1987, the canonization of Lorenzo Ruiz. On January, January 20 to February 17, 1991, Second Philippine Plenary Council of the Philippines. January 15, 20, 15 to 20, 1995, 10, the 10th World Youth Day in Manila. On 1997, the publishing of Cat Catechism, Catechism for Filipino Catholics, January 17 to 20, 2001, Second People Power Revolution. On January 25 to 26, 2003, the Port the Fourth World Meeting of Families in Manila.
January 9, 2006 400 translation 400 translation of the Black Nazarene January 9, 2006 400 translation of the Black Nazarene On 2007 the, la the launching the launch the launching of TV Maria November 20 to 27 2009 5th Asian Youth Day in Imos April 19 to 22 2010 was the first Philippine Apostolic Congress on Mercy October 21 2012 the canonization of Pedro Calumso October 13, 2013, beatification of Jose Maria de Manila. On October 16 to 18, 2013, first Philippine conference of on new on January 15, 19, 15 to 19, 2015, apostolic visit of Pope Francis. January 24 to 31, 2016 On January 15, 9 to 19, 2015 The Apostolic Visit of Pope Francis On January 24 to 31, 2016 The 51st International Eucharistic Congress held in Cebu on January 16 to 20, 2017, the Fourth World Apostolic Congress on Mercy. December 15, 2019, first papal celebration of Singbang Gabi. On May 1, 2020, Luis Antonio Tagle appointed as first Filipino Cardinal Bishop. And the first, the 80 million Catholics was played as the video slide after this. 80 million Catholics, 16 Archdiocese, 72 Diocese, 7 Apostolic Vicari, 8 1 Military Ordinate, Catholic Education and Services, 1118 Prep and Elementary School, 1070 High Schools. 341 universities, ABD seminaries, 1 to 6 hospitals and clinics, 37 orphanages, 15 basilica S, 40 cathedrals, 28 national shrines to 1 to 7 parish and churches, 1 5 to 5 schools and seminaries. So let's begin the main event show, our talk show. Good day everyone, welcome to our talk show. I am your host, Jerlyn. And I am Heaven. So today we're going to talk about our faith in God. But before we start, let me ask you, partner, what do you mean by faith? So, faith is a strong belief in God based on spiritual apprehension rather than proof. Okay, so, in today's situation, we know that we face COVID-19, so how is your faith? Is, is it getting stronger or not? Yes, my faith is getting stronger because my faith is my weapon to overcome all the obstacles that I face. Ooh. So how about you, partner? Well, well, when you say a weapon, yes, it is true. Faith is our weapon against COVID-19 since it is the only thing that we use to be strong enough and to face those challenges so that, and also it helps us to be more powerful, yes, and believe and trust God that everything will be back to normal. So, 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 let, let us introduce, introduce our three special guests, yes. namely, Miss Mary Rose, a round of applause, please. Next is Miss Aina. And the last guest, Miss Rosette. Oh. Welcome to our show, ladies. Please sit down. Yes. Yes, yes. So, how are you, ladies? Well, it was a privilege for us to hear this this show, and I'm so grateful. 
We are all so grateful. Yes. Are you okay, Miss Aina? Yes, I'm fine. How about you, Miss Mary Rose? I'm good. Well, it's nice to hear that. So, are you ready for our... Questions? Yes. De definitely yes. Wow! It's so strong. <laughs> what a powerful one. Yes, so, let's start. Okay, so first question goes to Miss Mary Rose. What is the impact of the faith to the people when it was introduced? Thank you for that wonderful question, Mr. Heaven. Um, as we all know, as we recall the past, when Magellan landed in the Philippines, Rahumabon wholeheartedly accepted him together with his wife which, which is Reina Juana they accepted her wholeheartedly the Christianity while there are some that fought for what they think is right just like Rapulapo he fought for everything that lead that lead to he risked his life As, as a matter of fact, now we are celebra celebrating the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines and together with it, it is a jubilee year. So it is a big <laughs> a big celebration and faith has something to do within us. Even though there are many religions that come over now, still Christianity expand. Then, as we know, individuals, we have everyone's faith unto God because faith helps us in our daily lives and it keeps us stronger. That would be all. Thank you. So I would like to ask this question, Miss Aina. How are the people we in terms of our faith? Um, well, I don't think faith was eradicated completely. Faith works for every individual to survive in their silent battles. And faith makes a person alive. They might trust the whole process for them to survive. But as for now, some faith goes wrong. In our society, where everyone manifests ethics and morality, there is still existence of a biased judgment to the people's rights and freedom. Faith is not just our relationship to God, but it includes others. Treating people right is a serving to God. It is not about religion, but also humanity. It is how you give importance to every living soul. Thank you, Miss Aina. The last question goes to Mr. Seth. Do you feel any pressure? Well, I'm not. Okay. So my question is, what are some challenges that the people we need to undertake to deepen our faith? Well, religion is extremely important for many people around the world. And faith has done amazing things in terms of guiding them and healing them. Most Christians want to feel close to God, to feel their interaction, their focus, and their hearts for Him with God. That the world... Most Christians want to feel close to God, to feel their interaction, to feel their focus, and their hearts for Him. But we live in this world of many distractions and interactions. And at times, it is difficult this sensation. The following are the challenges, some challenges of faith that we need to undertake. Number one is the COVID-19 challenge of faith as people, devices, the broken family, the poverty, and even the judgmental society. But no matter what we are struggling in life, we have to remember that God will always answer our questions. We have to forgive ourselves, to ask for forgiveness, and 
No matter what we're struggling in life, we have to remember that God will always answer our questions. We have to forgive ourselves and ask for forgiveness. When we cannot go, we know that we should do. When the world distracts us and leads us to our strength, we must return to the safety of faith and know that by His will, all things will be made right. Thank you. Thank you for your astonishing answers, ladies. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, before we end our show, um, what have you learned, partner, for their wonderful answers? Well, I have learned that even if we are in our darkest moment, if we have that faith in us, light will still overpower darkness. That's all. Yes, and I can say that all of their questions, um, all of all of the people can relate on it since we Christians is a very faithful person. So guys, uh, oh, I mean ladies, thank you so much thank for you. coming here in our show. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Also. Yes, so, so before we end our show, this is me again, your host, Jerlyn. And I am Heaven. Goodbye. Signing off. <laughs> yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>